it starts getting closer to the end of the year, people are so, I mean, have so many other different activities that it's good that we are all surviving. <laughs> well, you, you, you have to think uh, of the one that you're submitting here because we will, we want to have you start sharing, you know, and, and, and discussing with your colleagues. Good morning, Patricia. So this is, uh, um, in fact, uh, today it's going to be more like housekeeping and planning what we are doing next than, than anything else. Uh, I do think that uh, we already have discussed uh, all that we needed so that you could write your, your papers. I believe that maybe uh, you need now some time to focus on, on writing or choosing which paper you, you want to discuss with this group here. So my, my idea is that uh, maybe we, you know, for the next two weeks, uh, I will give you uh, time for you to work on the papers and then we will have to uh, uh, organize them in a way that you can send, uh, uh, submit the papers as if it was submitted to a, a conference or, or a journal. Uh, and then we, we have your colleagues and myself uh, uh, reading and, 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 and doing, let's say, in our case, it's not going to be blind review. Uh, in fact, I, I think that this is going to change in the future. Blind review was very important for very long, but I think that we have already reached maturity in many academic um, um, communities, let's say, for us to start having um, a, a review that is not blind review. When, uh, you know, when in the past, some of those uh, uh, researchers that inspired uh, science, Newton, Kepler, uh, and uh, I mean, when we heard of them exchanging letters with other uh, researchers, what they were doing was actually peer review. You know, they were sending their research to others so that others could comment on what they had done so that they could improve their, their research. It wasn't because, you know, they loved writing letters. It was not. Of course, it was not, or most of them were not love letters or letters to friends. It was letters to other people that could review their work. Uh, and at that stage, it was not done uh, in, in, in this blind ma uh, way that we do uh, these days, right? So I do believe that we can go back to that. Uh, what we, for, for some reason uh, in, in the past, the, the decision to have blind reviews was because they, they thought that those reviews could be more honest when you did not know who you were assessing. Well, these days I believe that uh, you can even get more honest reviews when people know who is reviewing, because then the reviewer will have to, I mean, we, we, again, we are, we are, we are a community. We, we want to be smart in the work that we do when we're writing our papers, but we would also like to be respected by the good ideas that we give to other people's, to, to improve other people's work, right? And when it's blind, it seems that sometimes people say, well, nobody knows who's doing this anyway, so I'll do it anyway. You know, uh, I, I have received reviews of my work and as an editor, I've received reviews of other people's work that I, I many times thought, gee, I would be ashamed if I had, if I were uh, the reviewer that sent these comments. Uh, because uh, it's not only that they're not helpful, sometimes they're too superficial. Sometimes they simply won't help the the person at the other end. So I, I do believe that in the future we'll go back to, uh, in, in fact, there are some, some journals that already they publish the paper and they publish, uh, it's all done in, in blind review, but after the paper is published, they say, well, the editor for this paper was this person and the reviewers that contributed here were, were these and, and, and that person. Uh, I think it's, we're, we're going that way. And uh, in my opinion, it's a good way to go. So we, what we will do here is, uh, we will share our the, the papers that you, let's say, you submit to this to, 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 to our course here. We will share with other colleagues. Uh, I will probably have to uh, I'll have to respect language. So if you write in Portuguese, it's going to be another Brazilian who will be reviewing uh, your paper. If you write in Spanish, it's going to be another Spanish-speaking reviewer. Uh, so so we will do that uh, to, to to make uh, it easier. And if you write uh, in English, it, it's going to be someone who feels comfortable to provide you with the review uh, in English. So that's something that we will do. Um, but the idea is, uh, again, I keep, I keep ins insisting on this. Uh, I think that the best way we get to become better writers, it is when we become better reviewers. So I believe that most of you will be doing a review for the first time. 
Um, others may have already had some experience reviewing, uh, but, uh, and of course, uh, the, the, we, we do have among us here uh, people that are more, let's say, uh, senior in, 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 in research. So they, they've already done a lot of uh, previous reviews, but I always learn a lot from reviewing in the sense that I always think, gee, you know, I'm about to tell this person to do something that I should be concerned about in my own work. I'm telling them to do something that I don't do myself. So that, that sort of becomes part of my DNA. You know, it's almost like if I were changing my own uh, DNA as a writer and in the future, I will pay more attention to that. And, and this is why I think never reject reviewing uh, as academics. Uh, it's, uh, uh, I, I know that sometimes we are overwhelmed with activities. And when I say never reject, of course, if, you, if you're behind with reviews, uh, that you still need to, to, to do. You, 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 you have to tell whoever invites you, sorry, I can't do it now. Uh, but always keep the, the doors open because if you, say, if you say that you don't want to do it, there's a chance that the editor or that review, that the, whoever is inviting you is going to say, well, this is either a busy or a lazy person. I'm not bothering any longer. But tell them, well, I can't do it right now, but uh, feel free to invite me again in the future uh, that I am... Um, that, that's something that I, that, that I wish to do. And besides, as I told you last week, this has to be a commitment of ours also, because if we want other people to put their efforts reading what we are doing, um, we should also understand that the, the whole system only works when other people also, uh, uh, sorry, when we also put uh, effort into reviewing other people's work. And, and keep in mind that thumb rule that I told you uh, last time, uh, for each paper you submit, and, and you expect to get reviews, think that uh, you should have, you, you should review at least uh, uh, three or four papers from other people uh, just to keep the system balanced, just to make sure that there isn't someone who's being uh, over, uh, um, you know, who's, who's, who's working more than they should to review your papers when you're not, uh, you know, contributing with your own share, right? So this, of course, for those of you who are still master students, uh, you will know that you have to do that later in your life because uh, you will probably you are not going to be invited as often. Uh, more, let's say the the more rigorous a conference is, or the more rigorous a uh, journal is, the more it will rely on reviewers that are already either doctoral uh, uh, that have a doctoral degree, or at least that are finalizing the, their doctoral studies. Uh, so you know, Rogeri, for for example, who's who's starting this. Uh, it's probably not going to be uh, invited to be a reviewer for a while. So at the beginning, you write more than you review. Later on, uh, there, it is even possible that you, you review much more than, than you write. Okay. Uh, Do you know, uh, Alexander, that uh, I have uh, classes in methodology, and uh, one teacher said to us, it's good of you to, to book a time in your schedule to always have the possibility to review an uh, article. Maybe there's uh, a, a week that we will not receive an article to, 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 to read, but it's good to have the time in your schedule to always uh, review an article at least one week or uh, uh, every two weeks. Because, uh, yes, I reviewed something in the last conference that it, um, I don't remember the synergy, uh -huh. uh, and it was very good because uh, I, I saw things that I, I, I was doing and if you were assigned to me double this, then I could say, uh, say to other person, do double this too. Yeah, yeah we, 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 we learn from the reviews that we receive. And uh, I hope that, uh, I mean, some of you are, for those of you who are sending the first papers out to a conference, of course, we always think this is my baby, we, we love what we do, but we have to understand that probably our first papers are not going to be that great simply because we're still learning how to write uh, what is really a report, right? A paper, an academic paper is a report of, you, of the research you do. And, and there, there are certain rules that are not absolutely strict. They're not rules that are, are absolutely unchangeable, but, the, but, but they are sort of uh, agreed rules. Uh, and, and, and we've already discussed uh, those here in this seminar when I propose you that template. Of course, some people will think it's horrible to have a template. And again, I think it's a flexible template. But you should think that in general, there is a, uh, some, a, a specific session in your paper where you have to tell your reader about your objective, where you have to justify what you're doing. And then there's another specific session in which you're going to review other people's work, try to establish the state of the art, uh, try to uh, put the authors that have already discussed topics that are close to what you are discussing, 
put them to talk among themselves. So I usually uh, say that it's uh, having your sources discuss among, among themselves. Of course, they, some of them are already dead. Some of, some of them uh, are, are working on different topics that they're not interested in that, that any longer. But, you know, this is the beauty of, uh, of writing as one of our technologies. Uh, I think we discussed that writing allows something that was written to be there forever in the sense that you can rescue that, bring to, to support your, your own uh, work, and, and, and you allow, let's say, Aristoteles uh, to, to discuss a topic with uh, someone who, who was dealing with it last week, right? In spite of being thousands of years apart, we can still put these uh, people to talk to one another, uh, let's say, in, 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 in quotation marks here. Uh, and always, of course, trying to respect the, and understand the fact that although writing allows us to overcome uh, uh, distance and time, uh, Aristoteles wrote something on a different environment uh, than uh, anyone who's writing it now. So we have to be uh, careful when we are, we're putting our authors to talk to one another, make sure uh, that we explain uh, the different environments in which each, each of them was uh, uh, well, uh, experienced that, uh, uh, that topic and, 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 and make sure that we, we make some justice to the facts that uh, it was not, it's not all people that are, are discussing that right now, okay? But, uh, so we have a, a session for that, and then we have a session that is specifically for our methodology. Uh, then we, we, we have another session where we're going to discuss our results. Then we have our conclusion, uh, references. It doesn't change much, right? There's no reason to change much. Of course, you may, we, we are all free to do whatever we, we wish. We are the authors, right? The author is in command, the author decides what he or she is going to write but at the same time the author has to know that there are consequences if others do not understand why you subverted so much the the structure the templates that everyone else is used to then maybe uh, they're not going to have uh, the same level of respect for your work right? when we're doing literature work we can be very sub subversive uh, in, in the way we write when we're doing academic work uh, we, uh, our intent is that the form is so uh, usual and so so much what others expect that they really can focus on the content. If we subvert the form and if we want to, you know, to do things in a complete, uh, to, to write our report in a completely different fashion, then the reader will have to put a lot of energy into understanding the form and they will lose uh, some or they will not be able to put as much energy into understanding the content, which is really what matters in our in our research projects. Right? So this is why we say stick to the template as much as you can. Of course, it doesn't need to be my template. And by the way, it's not my templates, right? It's a, that's a, a template that I, I would, uh, I'm sure that many researchers would agree with and say, yeah, I do exactly the same. Uh, others would say, well, I would do it slightly different. It changes a bit depending on the community we are engaged with. You will also notice that it changes a bit depending on the, the depending on the conference you're writing to or, or or to the journal you're writing to. I always say if you want to be published in a specific journal, read a lot of the papers that they have already published, because you will then understand their structure. You will understand the let's say the hidden templates that they are proposing, and you can write uh, according to their. Uh, let's say, structure to, to, to the way that they think that is the best uh, way of writing. That changes a bit. In fact, sometimes it changes a lot from one journal to, to the other because, for example, a journal that is more quantitative tends to, to have uh, uh, structures that help quantitative uh, work to be reported. Uh, a journal that is more qualitative may be even a little looser or more flexible in terms of the formats because qualitative data are uh, acquired and are analyzed also in more flexible ways and you should give the, the writer the opportunity of deciding what is the best way of presenting uh, that data or even of uh, arguing and justifying why uh, he or she chose a specific methodology. So uh, if you are more qualitative and you want to publish in more qualitative journals, go there and read the papers that they, they publish and make the, adju uh, the adjustments you, you believe that are, are reasonable to our suggested templates so that your work becomes more suitable to that specific uh, journal. Right? Uh, uh, on the other hand, if you are more quantitative, check the journals 
the, the, that are more quantitative in the in the way that they uh, well, well, journals that, that tend to publish more quantitative work and see uh, the changes that you need to do there. So again, the templates, the, the, maybe the, the name template is not a good name. Uh, uh, even talking about the structure of a, a paper may be a little uh, too strong, mainly if you're more qualitative. But I argue that even in, in the case that we are writing qualitative work, and I, most of the work that I do these days is qualitative, it's still good if it has some structure that other researchers also understand. We, we are not writing to an echo chamber of people who think exactly like we do, right? It's not, we're not writing to our social networks. Uh, we're writing to, a, uh, we have to convince a much broader uh, group of researchers, some of which uh, are aligned with us in terms of methodology, some of, of which prefer to use completely different methodologies, but they will still respect us if we communicate, if we write in a way that's our work seems at least reasonable and, and, and feasible and, and acceptable to them. And, and this, this has to be our challenge. Okay, so as I was saying, for those of you who, who arrived a, a little later, uh, today we do not have a specific topic. I do have a few uh, things that I still have to, to talk to you about what we did last week when we were discussing the possibilities of using uh, mail merge as a way of uh, trying to convince uh, our, let's say, people that receive our emails inviting to participate in our research to try, try to convince them to, to, to become uh, actual participants, right? I mean, everyone receives so many emails these days, and, well, and, and I'm talking about emails, but maybe you're, you're sending your, uh, you're, 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 you're sending your invitation for people to participate uh, in your research um, in, in the social networks. Uh, you send that through different means these days, but you want them to click on your on your survey, or uh, and and you want them to to fill that in. So, uh, my I, 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 what what I did uh, in in our previous um, uh, meeting was to talk about my experience with increasing the rates of return. And uh, the impression I have is that I usually get better return rates for my surveys or even for for, for any communication with other researchers when I I make them feel that I'm talking directly to them. And it's not always the case. I mean, many times I am writing, for example, an email uh, to, um, I don't know, 300, 400 people. But even when I do that, as I showed you uh, uh, last week, I try to do that in a way that each one of them receives a very personalized uh, email in which I'm, I'm talking directly to a person that I name, referring to their, usually to their first name, I, I try to be. I, I tend to be a more informal person, but I told you that you can do it differently depending on on how you 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 deal with the world. Let's say, but I I usually write uh, in you know directly to the person, uh, uh, referring to them by their first name, uh, or of course if I if I know that it's someone who's uh, who's known by their last name, for example, I have some colleagues that they themselves refer to themselves using their last name. So if I already know that, that's going to be what will be in that column. Remember the the, the name column in my in my Excel sheets, uh, and, uh, and, 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 and and then I will be using that. Because of course, if I always refer to, to Patricia here, uh, whenever I talk to her, I say, uh, uh, I call her by the first, her first name, and then I write an email to her and say, uh, dear Belotti, she will say, well, Alex, is, this, is, this is just a, an email that he's just getting things out of a, a, a you know, of a data set. Uh, this is not a personal email. And the same happens, for example, uh, Let's say that uh, uh, someone else here, for example, uh, Antonio, uh, if, if everyone knows uh, Antonio by Cortez, for example, and I say, hello, Antonio, he will say, well, Alex always calls me Cortez, and now he's calling me Antonio. This seems that he just got things out of a database. Yeah, go on, Patricia. Uh, no, I'm, I'm, I, I, I am recording. Let me just check that. I, yeah, I'm, I'm recording uh, locally here. But I, yeah, may, maybe what I'll do, I will also record... Yeah, yeah, it, it is recording locally, uh, so no problem. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, it's, it's it's good that you 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 tell me that because sometimes I I forget about it. Uh, the, the the difference between when I record at my end and when I record with Google Meet is that uh, when I record at my end, I'm only recording. I mean, I record your voices, but I only record uh, my face here, right? Or so so it's a little less invasive. Let's say you can be. Yeah. 
as orientações para o trabalho que eu vi no início, quando eu entrei, que o professor estava uh, falando do tempo para a gente fazer a, yeah. o artigo nas duas próximas semanas, o professor irá colocar lá. Yes, that, that's what, uh, yeah, it will show in our Moodle, uh, what Patricia is asking me is the plan for the next weeks, uh, for those that were here from, from the beginning. Uh, my idea today, I want to, 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 the, to, to wrap up things, uh, to go back to, <coughs> sorry, to, to all, uh, we'll, we'll go back to each one of our uh, meetings here and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about them and try to connect things. Uh, and then my idea is that for the next two weeks, we will not have uh, meetings. Uh, uh, I, I will be here, so if you, if you want to, to talk to me, uh, uh, you just send me a, a WhatsApp uh, message during the, the, the previous week and I, I will have maybe, let's say, half an hour for each one who needs uh, specific support. And then I'll be using that time, uh, the time of our, which would be our, our our meetings here from, you know, well, well those, this, this two and a half hours of, or whatever. Uh, I will be here and I will be talking to people that need some direct uh, assistance uh, for the next two weeks. I, I will include that in, in Moodle to make it very clear. Uh, and then the idea is that in three weeks from now, which means, uh, I don't know, today's the 7th, the 14th, and the, let's say the 14th and the 21st would be for you to work on your own. So the 28th uh, uh, of uh, November, that would be a date where we would uh, submit our, uh, whatever we have that we want uh, our colleagues to, to review. And then I will organize some of your colleagues to review your work. Uh, and that's going to be, uh, let's say, our, our, our it's, it's, I always say that it's important that we have other people looking at whatever we're doing, even before we send to a conference uh, or, 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 or a journal. Because our, uh, well, if we, if, if we give whatever we write to our brothers and sisters, even if they don't know anything about our topic, uh, they will probably already be able to tell us about something about the, the quality of the language. If we, if we, if we give uh, uh, whatever we're writing to someone who's studying the same topic or who's, who's part of a, a research group or whatever, they will be able to help you a lot. They, they will probably be better reviewers than uh, the, the reviewers you will get from the conference because many times whoever is organizing the conference uh, has a lot of uh, reviewers to, that, that they can assign, but sometimes they don't even know exactly what, is, what the, let's say, what the, the main topic of interest of each of those reviewers is. So, uh, so that may be a little random. But when you have someone else that belongs to the same research group as you, that means that uh, you will uh, surely get some very good uh, advice from there. So always, it's, 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 it's good to have a few colleagues with whom we exchange papers and they read what we are doing, we read what they are doing. We are all sharing uh, uh, our efforts and time and we're all improving each other's uh, work, okay? Um, so, uh, but, but going back uh, to, to what we were doing uh, last, uh, last week, Remember that uh, I, I had prepared a very, uh, and, and let me just show you this because uh, I had prepared a very, um, very simple um, form or survey. In this case, it was a survey just to collect your uh, some data from you to help me prepare um, the, the, let's say, the invitation to participate in 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 in, in my research afterwards. Right? Remember that I had forgotten to include an email address here. So at the end of our session, I was asking, please send me your, your, your emails through WhatsApp uh, so that I can include uh, it, in, it in, in my database. Uh, many of you did send me, some of you I, I was able to rescue your email from, from other parts. But considering that I, I had only had uh, eight people, uh, sorry, nine people answering it uh, last week. So we, I had Erica, Patricia, Marina, Flavio, Antonio, Marisa, Rogério, Flavio, and Dona answering. I thought that maybe if there is anyone else who still uh, hasn't answered that, let me just include here in the in the. Um, well, uh, I'll just have to very quickly here include the link for you too. If there is anyone else there who hasn't yet uh, filled it in, I just included there uh, the link. You can you, you can uh, very quickly uh, answer that questionnaire, uh, and uh, and your answers will show here. Um, and uh, but 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 so, so if there is anyone in the call that has had not answered it yet, please do it. Uh, and I will very because I want to very quickly then go back to our to the way I I prepared that form uh, the, the 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 mail merge form in in words uh, with data that was in Excel. Uh, and you will see how quickly we can 
uh, have that sent to people uh, in using uh, Outlook. Of, of course, this is for people who use uh, Words and Excel. I know that some, some of you use uh, open uh, software like, uh, I, I know, some sort of uh, open office or something. They, they also have mail merge possibilities there. Uh, so I, I, I would encourage you to learn how to use mail merge because it's a very strong tool to, again, to reach people and reach people in a way that they feel that you're talking directly to them, even if you're sending that email or that message to uh, hundreds or, or even thousands of people. We have to be careful, but but it works, okay? Um, all right, let me just see if, uh, okay. Uh, so so, so there, the, the, there's people that are, that are probably still writing, so I'll give them uh, a little time to do that. And we'll come back to this uh, soon, just to wrap up uh, the the mail merge thing. I, I didn't send you the message last uh, last time. Remember, I, I do have it sort of ready here, here and said, uh, estimado, uh, and if, 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 if I don't refer to, to Antonio by his first name, I would like to maybe it's right, estimado Cortes, if that was the way that I usually talked to him, right? But otherwise, if I don't know, if, if it's people that I've never talked to, I, I still prefer to use their first name because that brings proximity. That makes people already uh, feel that I'm treating them as, a, as a, if I was, uh, was asking a special favor to a friend or, or, or even to, to, to a stranger, but I'm, I'm, I'm really opening my heart and saying, look, I, I, I need you to help me. Uh, and that, that proximity makes it much easier for people to feel interested and to try and help. That's at least my impression. Then when we write a very formal request, you know, and, and then people say, well, I mean, there will be thousands of other people that can answer that I will not bother. But when, when someone asks you directly, you know, they use your name here. Uh, remember that even that trick that I told you to, to write, if, if you're writing in Portuguese or Spanish, we have this thing that we, I mean, the, the estimado has to be, if it's male, it has, remember this O here, it relates to uh, uh, a, a column here that's, that tells us if the, the person is, is male or female. Many times, if I have a huge data set, uh, I don't have this information. So what I do, uh, I prepare my data before sending. I create a gender uh, column and I go there and I, and I assume that Antonio, okay, Antonio, I know that it's a male man, so I, I, I will write here. Uh, male, female, many times I, I, then I just write M or F or whatever to, to make it faster uh, because it doesn't matter. What, what I have to do then in the mail merge afterwards is just checking. Well, if in this column here there's an, a letter M, then I know that uh, when I get to my words, there is going to, 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 to be an if clause there. If this happens, if, 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 if for gender the letter is M, then I'm going to write out an O here. If it's an, an A, uh, sorry, if it's, if it's an F, then I will write an A. This is details, but you know, uh, in Portuguese we have this expression that devil is in the details, right? Uh, when you when you pay attention to the details, you make uh, things. At the end, it's a very simple email, but people think, well, this guy wrote it to me. Uh, how can I not at least check what the survey is? Of course, you have to pay a lot of attention with your survey as well. We had already discussed that uh, also in 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 our previous uh, session that. If our if we include bias in our in our survey, uh, if we, we we may get our respondents to answer what we want them to and not what's or, or at least what they think that we want them to and not what they really should answer. So we have to be very careful. Again, the devil is in the details. We have to be very careful with the invitation uh, letter that we send them. We have to be very careful with each question we have in the survey. And again. I, I keep telling you, do what I do what I say, don't do what I do, because I, I wasn't I wasn't very careful. Remember, I I wrote uh, a form here, and I forgot even to include the the, the address. If if this was already, let's say, my my survey, and if I had, for example, promised people that I would send them uh, the results back, I would never be able to do that. Or if I if if I if, if the survey was to happen in in, in more than than one session. Uh, I would not have an email to, to, to send it to afterwards. I think that the, the first time I, I just had a link uh, for people to connect through social media or whatever. And then they answered me and I wanted uh, uh, to, 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 to have an, another opportunity of talking to them if I don't have their email address or some other way of contacting them. Uh, that will not happen. So we have to be very careful. And then uh, we also discussed the importance of uh, a, let's say, a pre um, 
uh, a pre-test and a pilot test of whatever we do. Because again, if we have a data set with information from 500 people or 5,000 people, we don't want to mess up with the, the whole data set and later on figure out that we cannot use it because we did some, some foolish thing, something happened. So we do have to spare a small amount of our uh, full data set to do uh, at least a pilot test. And it has to be large enough for us to see if there are any trends happening there. Many times we realize uh, that a trend is happening because of the way we ask the question. That means that we have to rephrase it. Right? We don't want to include any bias. Remember the question about the population of Turkey. Right? From, from our previous class, if, any, if anyone wasn't here last uh, week, uh, I do believe that it is already in our, in our Moodle, so you can, you, you can check it afterwards. But we, we, we had a questionnaire, in which, we had a survey in which I asked two questions to people. The first one was if they thought that the population of Turkey was higher or lower than 100 million people. And then the second question was, what they thought that the population of Turkey was. I asked that to a group and then to a different group, to, to, to the other part of the class here, I asked, do you think that the population of Turkey is higher than 30 million people? And then the second question was, what do you think that the population of Turkey is? And of course, those that were biased by a smaller number, 30 million, or a larger number, 100 million, in the first question, that reflect, reflected on the way they answered the second question. Uh, we have to be care very careful about this in our research because I mean, we're spoiling our own uh, results if we, if we do that. And, and of course, hopefully we're not going to do th that intentionally. But even if we do it unintentionally, we have to figure out ways of spotting that before it, it is too late. And that usually happens in a pre-test with people that are not part of our sample or in a pilot test with people that are already part of our sample. But it's a, it's a smaller percentage of the, the sample that we are happy to sacrifice in the sense we may not be able to use their data if we still have to change anything in our, in our survey. Uh, but at least if we find any problem in our survey, we can fix it for the rest of the, 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 the sample. Think, for example, <coughs> if this survey here, if, if this form that I, that I had asked you to fill in was a form uh, 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 related to, our, to, to my survey, uh, and I had sent it to the whole database, the, the fact that I didn't have uh, uh, a field here for people to, fill, to to include their email address would have spoiled the whole thing. Uh, but if I only had applied that to a small percentage of, of my data set, then I would realize, gee, gee, I was so dumb here, how could I have done that? But now I, I understand it, I fix it, and I saved 90, 95% of my data set uh, so that I can collect good, good data from them. Okay? Uh, uh, all right, I already have, okay, uh, Rogério has already included his data here. I don't know if there is anyone else who still wants to, to include it, but I'll, I'll leave it for now. We will come back to, to this uh, uh, a little later. I, as I told you today, I want to, do, to start doing some wrapping up. Uh, and for that, I need to show you what we did so far in, this, uh, in, our, in our meetings. Uh, we started, you will notice that the topics here, well, at the beginning, they were right as, as they appear in our, in our um, how do we call it, in, in, in our um, channel, in our YouTube channel. Uh, but afterwards, you'll see that there is a, a difference between, because there was one day that we, we, we didn't do it. And, but anyway, uh, so the first thing that we did, uh, uh, well, of course, the first topic that we, 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 we discussed was mainly trying to make you understand what we were going to do here, right? It was explaining what the research seminars were about. There's not much to say here. Uh, Topic two uh, was when we started uh, uh, explaining what the research questions were in information systems. Uh, I realized that uh, we do have people among us here who are not information systems uh, researchers. I hope you, 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 ha you have benefited from, from our discussions here. Uh, of course, we have this uh, uh, wish that uh, even those of you who are not information systems, there, there are many here that are computer science. I know that there are a few that are mathematics. Uh, uh, we, we hope that uh, even those of you who are not information systems, that you understand what our topic is. And maybe, and maybe for those who are from Panama, uh, considering that the, the, info, the, the, the that, um, AMSIS, the America's Conference on Information Systems, is going to happen in Panama City uh, next year, we, we, we hope that you, you are inclined to write something uh, relating maybe your topic to information systems. But we needed to tell you what information systems was about. And uh, I have to tell you that there is 
a huge confusion about what information systems is about in the world and even among uh, people who are lecturers or professors in information systems programs. Right? Many times we do have computer engineers, we do have computer scientists that teach in information systems uh, programs and they uh, they are not very clear about what uh, they, they don't understand uh, very well the differences, the subtleties uh, uh, that uh, make the difference between those different uh, computer related, let's say, research topics. Uh, so this is why we spend some time here uh, talking about information systems. And basically, uh, if, if I had to do it in a summary of that, I would say information systems researchers care about technology or care about information technology or information and communication technology as an object of study more than uh, an objective uh, maybe computer scientists or or computer engineers they i mean they, they they research the technology for the sake of improving the technology we in information systems uh, consider the way technologies affect our society the way technologies affect our companies organizations uh, so we think of, uh, of of the technology there as being Something that we will study because it's part of something that is larger than it uh, and that involves people either uh, individually or collectively, right? Uh, and this is why information systems also has so many researchers that are, for, for example, from the psychology field. Because psychologists are interested in the way technology affects each one of us individually, right? Uh, does technology cause stress? Uh, does technology change the way we behave as individuals, all of that surely interests psychologists. So this is why we have, uh, it's not only uh, uh, technologists that, that belong to our, to our field. Uh, and then, uh, for example, when we think the way systems affect groups of people, for example, in organizations, uh, the introduction of a new technology empowers certain groups and diminishes the power of other groups, for example. Uh, makes the CEO more powerful when uh, this person becomes in control of everything because he or she gets all the, the, the information related to, to the business or democratizes uh, an organization when it, when it empowers the laborers and allows them to, 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 well, to, to become even, even more relevant and more important for the organization than when systems were not there. That is a topic that surely interests sociologists because sociologists are, are, are people who are interested in, in you know, and how we relate to each other, but not individually, as groups. And then, of course, there are the engineers, uh, there are the business people, uh, each one looking at this from a different uh, angle or perspective. And this is why we have so many flavors and, and trends of uh, information technology research in the, in the world. Um, so this, this, this was uh, uh, our second topic, sort of, sort of to tell you what, uh, what information systems was about, right? Then after that, I well, I, I told you about how to write an essay simply to tell you, don't write essays. Right? Essays are difficult to publish uh, in, as, as research uh, results. Essays, uh, and, and the reason for that was because mainly uh, we are all very eager to read an essay that was written by someone who we think that is very experienced in the field. Because then we are interested in that person's opinion. Regardless of how scientific that opinion is, the fact that we have someone who's been, you know, doing scientific work in a specific field for 20, 30 years, means that their opinion, at least it, it can guide us towards topics that have better chances of becoming trendy topics, uh, or it, it can uh, uh, maybe take us away from topics that have already been too discussed and, and, and that these people, because they are very senior and uh, that they think that uh, there's no reason for us to spend effort on that any longer. So essays are important, but they, they, they should be written by someone who, who's experienced. And uh, that goes a little against the, the, the way uh, our system works, because as we usually have journals and conferences accepting papers as, um, well, uh, uh, or selecting them uh, by means of a double blind uh, review, uh, essays tend not to be accepted because the reviewer is going to say, well, this is an interesting essay, but, you know, who's saying it uh, and, and, and why should I believe on this, this, this person's uh, arguments if I don't know their, let's say, their trajectory, if I don't know their path 
through this uh, this um, field, for example. So understand, keep that for when you are senior, and mainly if, if you have the opportunity of writing an invited paper, or if you're called to be, let's say, to give a, a keynote uh, on a conference, they're calling you to, to, to give a keynote because they think that your opinion is important. Then you write, you can write a paper that's going to be an essay, which includes all what you're, you're saying in your speech, and that may be published in the conference's uh, proceedings, uh, or if you're, if you're invited by a journal, an invited paper could be an essay because whoever is inviting you is inviting you because of who you are. But ge that's not generally the case in most, most situations. Uh, we are all in a very, <coughs> very flattened, uh, let's say, uh, terrain where everyone is subjected to the same blind review uh, um, opportunities and, and that makes essay writing difficult. So this is why Although uh, essay writing is probably the easiest kind of... Well, I don't know if it's, if it's that easy, in fact, because it probably requires a lot of experience. Otherwise, you know, there are people that say that they're writing essays, and in fact, what they're writing is a, a literature review. Uh, but then if you're writing a literature review paper, uh, you have to do that following the, uh, a template, right? And, and, many, and, and many journals and many conferences these days prefer literature reviews that are performed in a systematic way so that uh, regardless of who's doing that uh, the, the the reader has this perception that if he or she had done it himself or herself uh, the results would be exactly the same okay so this was topic three and and, and for the, the, those of uh, of you who joined us uh, later uh, I'm, I'm just trying to wrap up what we've done uh, so far uh, and, and, and make sure you understand why we were dealing with all these things. Uh, Professor Guillermo Rodriguez was with us uh, talking a little bit about co some contemporary investigation models. Basically, the idea here and what we had agreed with uh, uh, Professor Guillermo uh, Rodriguez uh, was that he would give us a, a hint about different uh, qualitative and quantitative methods so that later on we could dig into uh, those methods uh, with uh, some other people that would come and, and, and talk specifically about them, right? So uh, he gave he has uh, given us some some ideas there. Uh, then we had a session uh, uh, with uh, three very um, I'd say uh, well uh, three three very well known uh, researchers uh, in our fields. Though these are the kind of people that uh, would write essays and would get uh, essays published, right? Uh, and we were asking them again about the, their ideas the, uh, of topics that they considered important or interesting, topics that should be discussed, topics that maybe are not as interesting as they were 10, ten years ago. Or so. And uh, the, the main idea here was to, to give us hints of, of, of topics that we, 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 we could study and that were relevant to, to our fields. Um, then we had uh, 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 what one, uh, well, maybe our first uh, um, discussion on, on how to to write our reports. And again, notice I'm not I'm not I'm not diminishing the importance of our research when I say that what we write that a paper is a report, because actually that's what it is. We're reporting to our community uh, the work that we we did. So this was uh, when uh, uh, I first presented you to to our templates, right? I. I find that this uh, topic here uh, is mainly for those who are starting to write uh, academic papers. This is a, a always an important topic to revisit because it gives you a hint of where to start and, and, and how to write uh, a, a report of a what, what we call here uh, an empirical research, but it's an empirical research that is theory driven in the sense that you, you don't start doing research empirically without having some ideas of where you can get with that with with that research, right? So you already you, first you 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 have some contact with the theory that already exists, and then you you develop some theoretical uh, sorry some empirical research either to try and make sure that the theory is that that already exists is robust is right, or to challenge it and and say that well look whatever we already had in the theory uh, lacks uh, the capacity of explaining something that I'm seeing here. In the empirical world, right? Uh, then we, we, we had uh, uh, what, what we, we did that in two in two sessions, right? So so this is why there is a theory-driven empirical research report part two. We were still talking about that. 
Then we had Professor Indira Guzman coming and talking to us uh, about mixed methodologies, uh, and, uh, and, and she is more qualitative in, in, in her research, but she was uh, discussing here some possibilities of doing qualitative research and uh, checking it with quantitative or vice versa. Uh, there is a good, uh, uh, there are good opportunities for us to do what we usually call triangulation in our research when we use myth mixed methods, when we, we do our research uh, based on a, a, a specific, uh, uh, let's say, methodology, but we have some other um, accessory methodology just to check uh, some points of that to, so that we are more confident about the results we have. Right? Uh, and, and, and then we had uh, uh, Professor Miguel Aguirre uh, coming and talking to us about quantitative methods. Uh, in information systems, or information systems has been uh, a, a field where quantitative methods have prevailed. Um, and I believe that our most respectful uh, uh, journals Still, if we, if, if, if we check, there is more quantitative than qualitative research being uh, published. But uh, we have had a lot of change over the, the last, at least the last 20 years. So it's not a recent thing that qualitative studies are becoming more, more important and, and that more people get interested in qualitative research. It's simply an acknowledgement that, uh, that the phenomena that we study many times are more complex than what uh, quantitative uh, research can deal with, uh, and that there are, there are things that need to be studied still in a, to, to, for you to, to, to get the, what I call the view of the eagle that sees the whole forest, many times uh, qualitative uh, research uh, can provide you with, with that perspective. But that doesn't mean that after having the view of the eagle, that you're not going to dig into uh, more specific details and, and, and be quantitative about it, or, that you will, uh, uh, from that uh, eagle's perspective of the forest, that you will choose uh, topics that you will address in more quantitative ways as well. Uh, so, so there is room for everybody, I would say. Uh, in the in the in the past, when when uh, Kaplan and Norton uh, wrote about balanced scorecards, uh, it's not not information systems theory. It's more like business theory, and these guys were accountants, and they they claimed that. It was better to be vaguely right than precisely wrong. So in, in some way they were saying we should not uh, try and, and, and be too precise when, some when, when having a, a, an overall understanding of the phenomena uh, is what matters. Uh, what they proposed in their method is that they were concerned that most organizations were too focused on financial results. So they had all these financial metrics to measure if the business was doing good or not, but that those financial metrics uh, usually only told us what had happened in the past and gave us no clue about where we were going in the future. So they said it's you also have to have metrics, for example, to measure uh, how happy your customers are uh, with your with your product or with your company. You should have metrics uh, that measure how innovative your processes are and how how fast you are being able to include new technologies or new features into your products because even if the customers are happy with the products you have now, will they be happy with the products that you will be able to deliver to the market in, in five years' time? So their ideas was with their balance scorecards scheme was that you, you could measure different things even if you were not so accurate in doing it. And I think that uh, uh, Norton and Kaplan's uh, work, although they were more focused in, uh, in business in general, it had an impact in information systems and it helped us uh, put more emphasis in qualitative methods because some of these qualitative methods allow us to, to see and measure, measure in a more loosely way, but measure things that we could not measure by using the traditional quantitative methods. So it was good to have uh, Indira's perspective and, 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 and Miguel Aguirre's perspective here, uh, each one of them pointing out more to qualitative or quantitative methodologies. But uh, you should, if you want to, to be uh, good researchers, try to to be good at, uh, try to understand and be good at both kinds of methodologies because many times we can use one of them to check the results that we got with the other uh, methodology and that will make our research even more, even more robust. Okay, and then we had uh, uh, 
th this is where I told you that uh, we have, for example, topic 10 was, we, we, there was a week that we did not, oh, sorry, I didn't want to go there. Sorry, I, I just clicked on something here. Sorry. Uh, we had a week that we did not have class. And, and from here on, you will notice that uh, whatever should be topic uh, 11, I include in, in, in the, in, in the, in the, in the uh, YouTube channel as topic 10, simply because I didn't want to skip one date. Right? But anyway, they're all there. Uh, this is last class when we were discussing the use of mail, mail merge. Uh, again, try to master that uh, using either Word and Excel or uh, you can look, uh, uh, there, there, you can also do mail merge even with Google Docs, uh, but you probably have to use some additional apps. That are, uh, I, I think they call, I don't know how they call them, but it, it, you just include something there. You can use it there. Uh, I'm sure that whoever uses um, um, some, some, some sort of uh, open source um, equivalent to Word, it also has this opportunity. This, this will probably improve a lot the response rate you get to your to your uh, uh, questionnaires, right? Uh, so this, this, this is uh, in terms of, of of topics. I think that this is all that we we we, we could or should have in in a research uh, in a series of research seminars as we did. So we're not going to have anything extra from now on. Uh, any 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 additional topic, unless uh, uh, you you feel that. But maybe if, some, if anyone has any ideas of something that you think this is that this will be great for us to talk about, uh, we could even uh, try and plan something. Uh, I could either try and do it or, or could invite someone to do it. But my feeling is that we now have to start uh, putting uh, effort into writing. Uh, and uh, and uh, I, I will include here in, in, our, in our Moodle uh, site, uh, what, what I'll do is the next two weeks, I will say no meetings or at least no meetings with, with everyone. Uh, if anyone wants to have uh, some, you know, a talk, 30 minute talk or something about the work you're doing, Feel free, just drop me a line uh, through WhatsApp, uh, and I will arrange that. In, in fact, you can even do that in in our you know uh, in our group, so that other people already know. Because then I'll say, okay, uh, be there at whatever time, be, be there in the first thirty minutes of our our meeting time, and then someone else will say, be there in the second 30, 30 minutes, and so on. So, I, so I'll be there to talk to people that need or wish to talk to me for the next two weeks, uh, and then in in uh, on the the third week from now on, that's when. I would like to have already uh, you uploading uh, material to be reviewed uh, by your colleagues here. We should not waste this opportunity of getting the feedback from, from, from our colleagues in, in this class. Uh, so <clears throat> I don't know how, how what, what do you think about this arrangement? Is, is, is this okay with you? I know that uh, uh, there may be people here who are because of the area in which you are, you, you, you're working, you, you may, may say, well, this is great, but I, I, I'm not going to, I can't write information systems. If you can still write something in, in, in your topic, and, 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 uh, but following sort of our structured um, templates, uh, I, I'm sure that we can still give you some hints or ideas of how you can improve your work. So the, the idea of the seminars is that we can improve whatever we're doing based on, on uh, the review that our colleagues can can help us with, uh, and, and so this is why I want to spare this uh, last uh, weeks to, 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 to work like that. Um, I don't know if you if you have any any questions, any suggestions of how to proceed. Uh, uh, is it clear to you the way that we're going to do two weeks, two weeks now for you to work on your papers? Uh, and then, uh, and then, in, I, I will. You will have another form that you will that I will ask you to upload uh, your work, and then I will split among yourselves. Probably each of you will have to review the work done by. Each of you are, are going to review maybe two 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 papers from 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 other colleagues, uh, and then uh, we'll we'll have a session uh, for feedback uh, where we will be this and, and this session for feedback. We will be all together uh, again because I mean we learn from from writing, we, we learn from reviewing, but we also learn from uh, other, other other colleagues' reviews. And of course, we are all learning here, so uh, the idea is uh, we don't expect these reviews to be the best reviews that you will do in your lives. Uh, as as writing papers, writing the reviews is also something that we we learn over time. But uh, but I do I do believe that uh, it was it's going to be to to work well. 
Uh, guys, uh, my idea was to... Uh, we do have here... Uh, we do have here, uh, you know, all these people that I could send them uh, the email, uh, uh, the email that is generated by means of my mail merge system. But I just realized when I was talking to you that for some reason, my words, see, there's a lot of gray areas here. For some reason, it seems that it's not detecting that I am myself or whatever. So it's not going to work straight away. Unfortunately, I will, I will need to do this uh, after we finish uh, our class. But you will receive still today those, at least those who have filled in the form that I included in the, the in our in our chat. Uh, you will receive an email from me, uh, a personalized email. Uh, based on the, the information that you included in, in your and, and you'll see that it's just basically what I, I would have to do here from when I when I when I finish this if I could do it uh, if, if this was not all great I would just say conclude and uh, merge and then when I press the button there it would generate I mean we had 10 people that answered my survey it would generate automatically 10 emails for each one of you which would be sent through in my case here through Outlook uh, and, and that, that's what, what what is going to happen but I have to figure out why this is all great, because at this moment I can't do it. Uh, so, um, I don't know, if you, if you don't have any questions, uh, I think that's, I believe that's all what I had for, for, for today. Uh, no questions, are you, are, are you all comfortable with writing uh, the paper? Is there anyone who, who are still, yeah? Precisely. I'm, I'm answering it in English again, but what Patricia is asking me again is how we're going to proceed. The next two weeks, no meetings. Uh, use the time that you use this time for working on, on, on your on your papers. And in fact, use other time as well. I mean, make writing a paper. Well, one thing that I may, I may not have re, uh, said in writing a paper is something that takes very long. Uh, uh, you know, well, writing a dissertation, writing a thesis, all of those things, it takes a lot of work from us. Right? Uh, so it's not something that we sit down and, 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 and write because of course we have to, you, you have already, most of you have already thought of what, what I want to do, what, what, it, what my objective is, and then how will I do? Okay, that's going to be my methodology. Then you have to go to the field and, 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 and collect the data. And of course, you have to do the, the, the literature review and then you have to, so it's a lot of work. Uh, and uh, so it's not something that we, we, we do over uh, a weekend. In fact, I can tell you that I, I uh, well, th there are papers that uh, took me two years to write. Of course, not, not two years writing it, but two years from when I started writing uh, until I, I felt confident that what I had there was reasonable. I did have a couple of papers that I wrote uh, over these last 20 years or so that took me only a, a weekend, uh, but that's not the general rule. Most, uh, most papers, uh, it takes long for you to write because um, data collection takes a while, or even, even maturing the ideas takes a while. So uh, it's perfectly understandable that, uh, and maybe for those who are writing your first papers, it's not going to be your masterpiece. The master, you know, it's, it's not going to be the best paper that you will write in your life, but we have to start somewhere. Uh, and one thing that I can assure you, we can turn it better by polishing it with the help, uh, with the help with uh, with our colleagues. So two weeks for you to organize your ideas and and uh, and, and and prepare um, uh, your the, the the best paper you can. In the third week, which is going to be again 7, 14, 21st, on the twenty eighth. That's include there as a deadline. The twenty eighth of uh, of November is going to be the date wh when you will have to submit uh, your, your 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 papers, right? Uh, submit uh, the, the draft, and then that day, the twenty eighth, uh, uh, I will I will organize the reviewers here. I will check uh, with people who can. Who, maybe we can even again. I, I want to do this uh, as as open as possible. Maybe we can even knowing the titles uh, that that will all be in the in the. In the, in the form that you will feel. You have the titles and everything. Maybe we can even choose, oh, I would like, for example, Erica could say, I would like to review Patricia's uh, work. And Rogério will say, I, I want to review Marisa's work. Antonio will say, maybe I will review uh, Anili's uh, work or whatever. Uh, we will try to do that first, checking 
depending on the topics that interest you. So, so on the, the 20, again, uh, 7, 14, 24, on the 28th, we will have a meeting uh, and, and we'll organize that. It's probably not going to, to take uh, very long. We'll do that in half an hour or so. And then you will do the reviews. And then one week later, we will come back and, 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 and uh, everyone will have their reviews already and we will discuss, we'll show uh, each other re re reviews. And again, I mean, we are here to commit mistakes. So don't worry, our papers are not going to be our best papers. Our reviews are not going to be our, our best reviews ever. Hopefully, you're all going to be better writers and better reviewers in the future. But that's what we have for now, and we're here to learn together. So we'll do it very openly, no, uh, how, no how, how do we say, uh, no bullying, right? It's, uh, the, no, no one has to, to concern about that. In fact, that's a session that, uh, well, that, that's a session that, uh, let's say, we, we will record it, but it will be, uh, most of the recordings that we have here, are, 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 I keep them open, anyone can, can see it on, on the web. That's a session that we will record and it will be closed only for us so that you can go there and review other, what others uh, talked about your own papers, but also what they talked about other papers that you can use and see, well, this is something that's nobody noticed in my paper, but I also have to improve that or whatever. So that, that's going to be the, 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 uh, what we'll do maybe one week after the 28th. Okay. And that way, uh, it means that uh, we, we will finish this uh, uh, on, uh, we'll finish our, our seminars on the let me show you exactly uh on the f probably it will be the 5th of december uh we'll have our, our last session if we can uh, discuss all all papers there and that gives people still enough time to uh you know to, to concern about christmas and the end of the year in our part of the the world here it becomes it starts becoming too hot nobody wants to to to, to spend uh, too long you know thinking people want to be at the beach or whatever so let's let's make sure that no one is stressed at the end of the year because then of course uh, you will have to start thinking maybe in, in, just after Christmas or whatever thinking about uh, writing uh, or, 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 or polishing your papers based on the comments you get and based on on the fact that you you had your paper sitting there for 30 days or so it's a good time for you to become the reader of your own paper so you reread it as you're not the author any longer, you're a reader of your paper, you can criticize it and you, and you improve it based on the information you got from, from the other reviewers and also from the fact that you have a distance from your own paper again and then you have enough time to, to, to write the, the finished uh, uh, paper uh, to, to, to send to AMSIS, which is, um, well, I think the deadline is somewhere early in, in March, right? All right. Okay, guys, so I guess that's it for, for today. A lot of a lot of work over the next two weeks. If anyone uh, uh, is concerned, if anyone needs uh, to talk to me, if anyone needs me to to have a look at whatever you have, uh, let's arrange uh, a time. I, I I I will be here next week and the week after, as I'm not uh, with the group. I'll be here talking to each one who who needs that. Just ask me. You, you can ask in our WhatsApp group because then I can already assign each one a, a different slot and I can talk to to each one of you using the same the same infrastructure here in our our, our Google Google Meet. All right? Okay, so see you then. Bye.